Yeah. Testing, testing? Yeah. Everything? Yeah. Sweet, awesome. Okay, cool. Kia ora koutou, kōrahera, taku ingoa. Hi everyone, my name is Rachel. I'm proud to be one of the backers of the Aotearoa Free Speech Coalition. It's probably fair to say I don't have a hell of a lot in common with the likes of Don Brash or even Chris Trotter or really any other members of the coalition. I'm not famous, I'm not particularly accomplished. Honestly, I'm just pretty much a random who's turned up here. But, as we are often reminded by the people who occupy these buildings around us, a coalition isn't always a bunch of individuals who all share the exact same worldview. If our three governing parties all got together for drinks, I'm pretty sure they'd find something to argue about. But something's obviously uniting them, as is the case with the Free Speech Coalition. Activists often say, this is something that affects all of us. But I don't think it could be any more true than when it comes to freedom of speech. I would consider myself to be a progressive. And when I see other self-described progressives wanting to place limits on and make exceptions for freedom of speech, I would like to remind them that more often than not, progress starts with dissent. Just because you're sitting comfortably with the majority today doesn't mean you will be tomorrow. And anyone who's studied their history will know there have been many times when the majority have gotten it wrong. I support the legal action against the Auckland Council because I don't believe a public servant like Bill Goff should be able to pick and choose who is allowed a platform and who is not. In order, to support, in order to satisfy the mainstream political attitude of the day. The council's justification for the decision was that a so-called peace action group was threatening to intimidate and harass attendees and staff if the event was to go ahead. So it was in everybody's best interest just to shut it down. That is a cowardly and dangerous precedent. These Canadians are no doubt controversial. Controversy comes as a package deal with freedom of speech in a liberal democracy. Freedom to speak is an extension of the freedom to think. It is an essential part of how we communicate, learn and grow. Sharing our thoughts with other human beings like I'm sharing mine with you now and receiving feedback on those thoughts is how we develop our ideas and beliefs. It is how we self-reflect. We voice our thoughts, we find out what others think of them, and then we can analyze, reevaluate them, and change our minds accordingly. Freedom of speech is the fundamental means by which a civil society settles its differences of opinion. It is what gives us the ability to question, challenge, and oppose the powers that be. Without freedom of speech, there would have been no civil rights movement. There would be no liberation of marginalized groups or recalling of archaic laws there would be no change, no progress. Protecting freedom of speech sometimes means defending the rights of people you disagree with to express views you may personally find abhorrent. But objectionable speech is to be debated, reasoned and argued with, not censored or banned. It is not up to the government to decide which speech divides and which unites. We all know... Yeah. that history never looks back kindly on those who try to eliminate dissenting thought. The word Nazi has been thrown around very casually with regard to these speakers, in my opinion disingenuously. What the people who would ban them are forgetting is that the real Nazis came to power by suppressing free speech. Their hideous ideology took root in part because they banned any ideas they deemed subversive. They silenced their political opponents. They censored art and they burned books. Suppression of free speech led to unimaginable atrocities. And freedom, suppression of freedom of speech as it pertains to this situation may also have unintended side effects. Attempting to silence a certain sector of society can sometimes have the opposite effect. If people with truly dangerous ideas are not able to express them in public, they will be driven underground 
where their ignorance and hatred can fester and thrive. That process of feedback and self-reflection is removed when you put people into an echo chamber. Sunlight is the best disinfectant. Yeah. yeah. Truly dangerous ideas need to be examined in broad daylight, not hidden in darkness. The price of freedom of speech is that each and every one of us will inevitably be exposed to opinions we disagree with or words we find offensive. This is the cost of living in a free society and it's a very fair price to pay. We cannot afford to trade our freedom of for freedom from. Freedom of expression is the lifeblood of art, culture and creativity. Without it, no one could push boundaries or challenge the status quo. Without freedom of expression, there would be no subversive literature, music, comedy or theatre. As an artist, I cannot condone censorship, political or cultural. That is why I am speaking out and why I support the Aotearoa Free Speech Coalition. My yeah. I'm nervous. First time. <laughs> My pro-diversity values include the diversity of thought and opinion. I believe in freedom of speech for all, not only those who share my personal worldview. Because without freedom of speech, there is no freedom at all. Namahi, thank you very much. Woo! Woo!